blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. sort shall you bring Five. into the ark, male and female. Four. Save them from the coming Three. Armageddon. All the wild Two. beasts shall be in your keeping. One. Two of every species from the beginning of time.
and there's a time of living to that level. From the convention, I do hope your lives were all lifted. Yes. And I hope you now know that you are not only a soul in being, but created in the image of God in excess of no matter what high ego gets to. Amen. Ego is yet to be like you. Yes. Ego saw us, and we gave the full description of the entire life of an ego why they are different from all other pets and uh, why God wants us to why the word was used as an ego like an ego egos being the characteristics the behavioral sense of life is what we were asked to be like but when it comes to creation only you and I would be able to let our world know we are different from no matter how gigantic a bear is. Uh, up to the ostrich. You are still bigger than that one. Uh, I saw in a race in Brazil, uh, almost like horse race, bears were used for racing, climbed by two people. As big as that. That is the largest of all sizes of bears and ostrich. Yet, with that, ego is still much more in sense and capacity and capability more than the ostrich. And uh, I, I told them in uh, New York, there are two animals very well known in Africa, the lion and the gazelle. The gazelle is a slim animal that has horns uh, in a very unique way. Is in the color of antelope. Only in East Africa and Zambia and other parts of that side of the world it is found. It's not found in this part. And uh, Gazelle is an animal that God gave feet for smartness. Lion rests for 21 hours a day and walk for three hours. He doesn't. So some of you walk, 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 walk. Walk money, walk in America and particular, they have three jobs. Money job, absolute job, and night job. So husband and wife don't know. The reason they are walking so much is that they want ends to meet. How many times ends don't meet? Because end means end. But except that the English is a very um, difficult thing to understand. A man like me now can never have my two ends to meet. My opposite and my positive and negative don't meet. My face and back don't meet. They are displacing different areas. <laughs> I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, this end and that end, they don't meet. Yeah. They live together in the same house, but they are not in the same compartment of a meeting sequence. <laughs> so, the, those of you who want two ends to meet, find out uh, what two ends are, and the possibility of their meeting, you have to analyze. Well, um, Every day when Gabriel wake up, he says these two words, Heavenly Father, may the fastest lion today not catch me. <laughs> and lion praise the soul, say, God, may any sick Gabriel <laughs> come out for my meat. Gabriel knows to be alive tomorrow, he must be the fastest lion to survive. Some of them live a lifespan of 35 years before they die. The oldest gazelle lives up to 64. 
But that's the four years. He has one gift. Exceed the speed of the fastest life. It must be alive. So when they break, when all other animals are hunting for leaves to eat, they're going to bite and get ready. It's a slim eat animal. When the pig is hungry to eat, and the other animals are looking for leaves to bite, Gazelle eats small and energizes itself. Waiting at any moment, lion may show up. So when they pray, Gazelle is busy, comparing to run. And why or know that unless it around the pastor Gazelle, it's going to die of hunger. So every day, these people are for action. Let me hear you say action. Step for a human being. A gazelle can be a lion in the street. A lion cannot live without catching a gazelle. You must wake up every day, put your feet on the road to run. Amen. Ecclesiastically, and by my canonical position, I shouldn't dress like this. But I found out that to age yourself is not too important. To do your job is most important. I told them again, I said, you know why I dress like this tonight? So we're not being very dead, I came to speak to you. Jesus walked this street before. Every day when you wake up, set your feet on the path of race. And run to beat the fastest life. So you can survive the next day. The life of maybe whatever may be, it's a life of lost life and lazy life. You must not find yourself in that category of living at all. You must do your best to be on the go, night and day. If you don't want life to pass you by, life is too precious for you to waste. And those of you that are my personal convert, when I travel, you stay home. One day, Jesus will arrive, and you are not there. Christianity. It's not true. It's not. It's not Christianity. Whether it's one nation that comes to a church when I'm around or sleep for money prayer, or elder, or a deacon, or a pastor, or a member, your life must be put in the line of activeness for you to be a survivor in the dying world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because one day, the lion of the tribe of Judah will arise. Yes. And to say well done to you, oh, the Lord told me, I call Pastor Lord, the Lord told me, everything we do now must be preserved for posterity. It's not put forward, put backward. It's with And to lead is to have all the ability. You know, Professor Kumbo has sent you his love there. Boy. He said to me, he said, some of us are born for our time. He said, some of us are born for our age. And some of us are born for our generation. But he said, you are born for past, present, and future. Amen. He said, we are what we are today because of the encouragement you get to us. And we are what we are tomorrow for the hope we see in you. But he said, you are not you you live a life, you are not living a life of 200 years. He said, in the category of few of you, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you come to that category. He was analyzing my life to me. He said that I will, I will come home and tell them at home. Few of you that are born before, for, and after. We should learn you. Because you come very rare. You come, you are not many. We should study you people. How many were talking to God when he said to me? How many words of this today really know me? Other than the wave of hand, Papa. How many of you really ministers here, ordained? Some of you have been with me 20 years, 30 years, 15 years, 10 years. Do you really? Jesus has disciples. 
Who do men say? Who do you say? Then they said, some say, some say, after some, they say, what of you? What do you think of me? Only one man gave him an answer. And he said to that one, flesh and blood didn't reveal this. What you are saying is the real thing. Some call me healer, some call me miracle worker, some call me Wyoming, so anything you call me. But to prove to you that life is what it is, Jesus said, who do you say I am? And I stand to say, many of you have seen me, many of you know of me, but to really know whom I am is knowing. For the retaining of knowledge, you haven't had it. And I'm going to do my best to unveil my life to you. Why you see me here and there? Not for the name. If it was to make the name, I've made a name for my children, children, children. I've made them. I've made them. It was never come forward that analyzed to me. He said, what you are building now? When we look, you just look at the hostel of the student. He said, this is what the people in Vatican did. That the design cannot be proven. All you do every year is to wash it, every 10 years. You put this building now, you can't be proven it. Now let me paint it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, relation yet on board, we come and meet it, this design. This miracle, miracle you see here. It's my personal design. Yeah. Put in by the architect. But it's my son. Almost all our buildings that I'm connected with must have it. If you have no miracle, you have no Jesus. But then, Vatican is almost 1,000 years old. No extra room, and in foreign lands that are building, you are not allowed to touch. You can't renovate it, you can't add toilet, and remove the broken one and put the new one. They are not touchable. There's, there are some areas of the country called Green Belt. No building can be put there. Only what you meet there is there forever. Just to skip. You are learning from me what activeness is. The same way you treat God's work. If it was your own, that's how you're going to grow. If you want your job to grow, you want your marriage to grow, you want your business to grow, put personal effort relentlessly. 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 Osborne came here in 1989. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
Jordan. He read one of my books. He said, Power for the Zero Hour. He said, Could you allow me to copy it anywhere I go? I said, Yes, sir. He said, Any of my book from today, take it because you, you, you will know more with it. Translate it to your generation. He said, Put your language in it. I call it your book because you represent me in living and you are doing 10 times more than what I do. I thanked him. I promised him when our university opened, the language you lost that nobody knew you said, I bring it back to life. That this generation will remember you lived. Did you hear me? Yeah. This time I went to Tulsa. He heard I was around. 1230 in the night. He said, you must come and pray with me. <laughs> he said, I've still not seen your, your books yet in my name. I said, it's already out. He said, I don't want to die. And people forget me. Now that you are doing more than what I've done, take my language with you. Life must not be a replica. It must be a representation. James chapter 3. Brother Robert told us a story on Wednesday last week. He was addressing the regions. James chapter 3. He said, Break the mark you met. He said, this January will be 80 years old. None of you should pray to be like me. You regents, whatever I have done, do twice more when this God will be praised and pleased. He told us of the first runner to beat the four minutes for one mile. He said, that young man woke up one morning and asked the father. He said, he asked his father, what is this one mile that remains four minutes world record for the last 16 years? And the father said, you can break the mark. So, he was a high jumper. He decided to add running to his life. And every morning, he will run and time himself, run and time himself. In the Olympic game of 1956, he created a new world record. Of three seconds, more than four minutes, three minutes, 97 seconds. And that record lasted to this last one. He broke the record of more than 20 years. And it took more than 30 years to come and break his own record. No matter how inspiring my life is to you, unless you intend intentionally to exceed what I teach you. You are going to be struggling to catch up, and me that you are pursuing is not going to stop. You must aim at higher heights. You must aim at higher goals for yourself. See, what you and I, do your hand like this, look at me. Say, you and I, you and I. say it. Yeah. What we are doing here cooperatively is a teamwork. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Whether by this building, by this building, by that, all the buildings here, everything you see structurally here is a teamwork. But on individual basis, 
this which we are doing as a team is different from what we can individually achieve. You know why they give four medals to relay runners? Each one around his part. Hear me very well. The team that wins gold, the team that wins silver, and the team that wins bronze have 12 prisons. One, two, three. Only one ought to be win. And uh, by the way, I call this inside the aircraft. In the race, few aim for gold, but in life, all of us can aim for age. That doesn't mean anything to you. In a race, only few can go for gold. <laughs> but in life race, we all can run for age. Amen. For old. Amen. We all can run for old. Those of you who are old, you are hearing me. Okay. If we are you know, if we are in a sport race, one will win the gold. But when it comes to the race of life, all of us can run for old, not gold. You have permission to run for old. That is like yes, you shake your head like a drawing man. Each one of us are qualified. We have to. If we don't, if we all don't run for old, we lose our gold. Some win it, but the reason they give four prizes to relay runners is that each one has his lap. You wouldn't have won if the person that gave you the batches didn't bring it. So when they are going to distribute the prize, also turn up bad. Am I correct? Yes. And I seen the four, depending on what mood I am in. <laughs> I seen the four. Are you going to now say you beat me and say, no? You can see often, but I've sung more than you. Yes, sir. If you put all my years, I'll be singing together. You are running for gold, but I'm running for old. So, now, you have to, besides our church, our school, our hospital, our anything, let us come to that day we are able to say, mine. Collective effort is good, but personal effort. That's why Peter said in the book of Acts. Look on us. Everybody say that. Look on us. Say it again. Look on us. Louder. Look on us. The Bible said the, the lame man fastened his eyes on them. The Bible first that ever. In the hour of prayer, Peter, James, and John went to the gate of beautiful. But when it came to miracle time, Peter said, Silver and gold have I known, for such as I have. I you can look or not, but if you need a miracle, I have. All this shall be here that. Yes, sir. So we can go out as a team. The man who preach fine, the man who pray fine, but the one whose efficacious prayer will do result. We have more combat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. The one who dance is part of the team. The one who plays is part of the team. In orchestra, there are many voices for the individual sound. It's the blending that makes it orchestra to orchestrate. <laughs> A quiet, a beautiful, this that quiet, unbeatable. It's individual effort that made it unbeatable. The harmony, the harmonize. So when you come here and you are actively engaged in the things of God, take the church. Who were we telling? I said, take this ministry as if there's no tomorrow. They were asking, what is the secret of the Church of God mission growth? If you go to some of our branches, you will not believe they are church of God mission from the signboard. They <laughs> <laughs> were interviewing us. Okay. I said the, the pastors from Lake. That's right. We take this ministry, she and I, every day, as if there's no tomorrow. Because the truth is that today is our own. 
tomorrow may not be there. And people that over procrastinate never have results. No. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it. A lady that sat near for a horse inside the aircraft. She had is her name. A law student. She's coming home for her law school. He said, I've only gone to church once this year. After preaching for mother father. He says, Are you know the problem? I will always say, Oh, I'm very tired, I will go in the evening. He didn't even come and say tomorrow. Now money for better. He said, I've done that. This is the eleventh month. I've only gone to church once. <coughs> she has sand head, but no sand mind. <laughs> And at the end, the ability of your brain will not carry you like what grace would have done. Yes. Press forward. Press forward. If you lazily take the work of God, eh, they will hear. Papa, they come to the it is your stuff. You do it like that. You will not sell it. You lock it Monday to Friday. And the one Papa is coming. Right, we eat everything inside. I think I should just end with the advice I've given you tonight. James chapter 3. Verse 1. My brethren, say that to everybody. My brethren. Be not, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Mm -hmm. As according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. For in many things we offend all. For in many things we offend all. If a man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to breathe on the whole body. Look at verse 3. Behold, we put peace in the mouth, in the horse mouth, that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Say with me, with my mouth, with my mouth. I'll give my life. I will be my life. It's Stand up and say that for yourself. Can you do that now with my mouth? I'll give my life. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. If you don't want to aspire, create an empire. Do so. 
an empire of freedom, an empire of liberty, an empire of liberation, an empire of leaving the weak one behind. I told all nations today, I said, then he said, my soul be different from other parts of the body. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Who did what? Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who satisfy your mouth with good things? I told them, Professor Warrior, if we are not serving the God of benefit, we'll be deficient. I told them, I said, most of the pastors at that level, in our villages and towns, the reason their children are not in the ministry is that their father could not fetch for them to eat. So they don't want to be an example of a follow up of their father. Think of the pastor you first knew in Coco. Whether the children are in the ministry. Think of the one you knew at uh, your village. Whether his children are in the ministry. They are not in the ministry. Why? The father was not able to prove that God can supply. And the child was not able to say, You are working for God. Let us help you. No. So their children say, I can't follow my father's punishment. So some of them become mechanics, some of them become watch repairer. Pastors' children. But when it came to our turn, somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For warriors' children. Hallelujah. And I what they have made. A man's gift does what? Makes room. Yeah. When you grow up, you don't grow too much. But your mouth can effectively affect your people. The rock in the horse mouth turn the whole body of the horse. And the words of your mouth can give you a turnaround. Yeah. You begin to learn to talk the way I talk. If you begin to learn, I was doing dramatical exercise with somebody. I said, I'm glad I came there. But to be late when I'm present, but I didn't come on time. English. It's just using your mouth to correct the things. Why should you be the great advertiser of devil's expectations? I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not you, A, you are the first to hold in there. You display it. They will say, that's what I do. You are going to do what I say. But with the same mouth, this is what I have here now. By the grace of God, by tomorrow. You hear me? I'll be more than this. Mouth talk as a man talk. All I need, I don't have now what is coming. Can I hear you say it? James, the brother of Jesus, said in verse 4, Behold also the sheep. He talked of, talk of totality of the sheep. Which, though they be so great, the greatest sheep in the world is half a mile from his own America, the worship. It houses 23,000 people and takes 21 aeroplanes. <laughs> Some of you don't need your car five. Hey, understand is coming again. That's the comment of some of you. <laughs> the greatest mathematics is in the Bible. What do you write in the Bible? Computer science in the Bible. Science and wonder is in the Bible. The course that the astronauts are doing today, going to Mars, they landed from the first man that went to heaven with that guy. Enough. Translated. So they are trying to see whether they are catching them. They are going to the first heaven, you know, going to the seventh heaven. The sheep don't be so great and are driven of heads of fierce winds 
yet are they torn about with a very small hand, whithersoever the governor listed. I wish if you are not in the state, how you can be in the state mind. Govern your mouth. Govern your mouth. I'm writing a new book. All things are possible. Amen. It's a title. You see it everywhere. everywhere you see my sign, you see possibilities. It is possible. To be well is possible. To have money is possible. To be happy is possible. But reminitize yourself and stop mingling with the motors. Hmm. Some of your friends are not needed. Our house used to be full of idiots. Many our neighbors, many inabilities as friends. As we grew and grew and grew, we grew and let them in. And unless you do that, you are going to flock together, which is not the job of ego. It's a bed of the same small feather. When it go blows to a full height and full length, it's nine feet in span. Nine feet. I can be and be and follow that one. It's possible. It's not possible. The wing of ego alone, the wind from his wing, can keep many beds. So they don't go near. What's the best of them? But that's because you are flocking together. A seed and a cell. Yes. And it's possible. It's possible. Use your mouth to say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed? Yes. yes. Use your mouth to say so. My battery is not good. Are you talking? Not your car. No. And if you are the redeemer of the Lord, you can say so. Can I hear you say amen? Yeah. I bless you. I came to challenge you. Fly high. Leave obstacles behind. For some miracle, break the man. Break the man. Go, go, break the man. What story have you not heard from my mouth? I told you, if a chicken refused to hide from an egg, he dies. No identity. No identity, no name. Whether a fowl, a cock, or a lunatic. But once it comes out, you can get a name. <clears throat> What's the difference between a cock and egg? They start on the head. <laughs> Have you known know that? Yeah. You can't. So we're not the You should be able to tell us that from uh, from what we need such What is that? From agriculture. You can tell us that. But every subject you want to learn, the Bible provides it. Model. A model. Try your best. Try your best. Try your best. If I write a book tomorrow and I say, Mount, mount up as you mount up. Are you going to say, I follow that one? Who have ever said that? <laughs> Has to have a name by all the book that. Are you going to say, I follow that one? Bend your mind and breathe less. Stand up. In the holy and bless the Lord.
Ghana to two million people in the wilderness. The God that supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory is still alive. Say hallelujah. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith.
spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to me. Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project we whites we or we boys, would say why is he doing that we couldn't see the vision at all we thought hmm, this is very funny but then sometime later we would realize oh yes okay i see why he's done that now and i was a muslim that i gave my life to christ in Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onitsha. And we went to put posters all over Onitsha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us and right there I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin or Nation for Christ Bible Institute and so that particular year I uh, requested, I wrote and fortunately I was invited to come, so uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79, my class started in uh, 1980, and uh, 
we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We entered a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. He said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him, the plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. 
Then daddy said or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there. Uh, Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed. Uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle, with some trash going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? 
And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and if he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. I said what? I beg what did I talk? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. He <laughs> said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What did the girl name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father comes, my late Ben in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swallowed there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So 
carry me. They were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping and all of a sudden the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed <laughs> 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 another day to me after a year and three months in the womb so my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me then he said maybe i'm not a baby i'm a wolf i'm this but for god be thy glory when they gave birth to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave birth to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive. My father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign 
there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'll like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child, the God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence calls from Britain and United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Aquas on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 
1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop, or Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about our Bishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters, sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Morris, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first 
Af black African evangelists to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom how bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined the Flagging Congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. 
His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blind, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.